This pastor hit the nail right on the head. Andy Stanley has officially come out of the closet. Not only should we flee sexual immorality, but we should flee from wolves who seek to destroy God's sheep. It is a biblical and loving thing to mark those who cause division and offenses contrary to the Word of God. It is a proper thing to name names and to warn people of wolves and false teachers who seek to destroy. But let's talk about it here on All Things Theology. Cue my theme music. All Things Theology, All Things Theology, we chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God follow me. This is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, grace and peace. Welcome back to another episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host, K-Dub. Today, we're going to talk about Josh Bice exposing Andy Stanley. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. I love uh, G3 Ministry, which the founder is Josh Bice. Uh, by the way, if, you, if you're not, if you, if you haven't heard of it, you got to go to G3 2025. I'll be there, other, other great brothers and sisters. A conference in Atlanta where sound doctrine will be exposited and things like that. But nevertheless, let's get into the video. Uh, the link to that will be in this description if you're interested in going. So uh, let's get into it. Andy Stanley is a prominent megachurch pastor, author, and the founder of North Point Ministries, a multi campus model church based in Alpharetta, Georgia. He was born on May 16, 1958, and is the son of Charles Stanley a well-known pastor and founder of In Touch Ministries who once served as the president of the Southern Baptist Convention from 1984 to 1986. He founded North Point Ministries in 1995, and under his leadership, the church has grown significantly and established multiple campuses in the Atlanta area. North Point Ministries is known for its innovative approach to ministry, utilizing technology and creative communication methods to reach a wider audience. Let me just say, I'm not a fan of the multi-campus uh, model that many churches are kind of employing today where, you know, you have the main church where they watch the pastor live and then the other campus, they're like the satellite campus church where they watch the pastor on a screen. It's just kind of, it's just kind of strange, right? And kind of not personal and you don't get to see the pastor afterwards. It's just, just very strange. Like just have a pastor preach there, right? Now, in recent days, Andy Stanley hosted a controversial conference titled the Unconditional Conference mm. with a stated purpose for parents of LGBTQ plus children and for ministry leaders looking to discover ways to support parents of LGBTQ plus children in their churches. This was Andy Stanley's moment for clarity on revealing who he actually is to the watching world. Yeah. Um to interrupt real quick is if you remember those who've been following this channel for a little while, I actually did some um, discussions about that. I, ex I actually spoke to someone who was there who himself is affirming and he saw the conference actually as a, um, uh, a good trajectory for Andy Stanley. He says it was good uh, to, to becoming more affirming in itself. He said it still had work to do, but it definitely was affirming. So Andy Stanley's conference, the unconditional conference was affirming from a, uh, I, I, sorry, he was the guy I spoke to was gay affirming, not that he was gay himself, but he is gay affirming. And so he thought the conference was great. I mean, you had many LGBT uh, scholars there like David Gushy, who was definitely LGBT supportive. And there wasn't any really pushback from the conference. It was it was already capitulating to the uh, other sides, uh, for lack of better terms right now. And so but he and he likes to deflect when he's asked this question. Like I said, I, I think the guy is brilliant. Right. He's, he's master in, in deception. I don't mean that in a good way. Uh, but, yeah, let's keep going. He was successful in delivering that message, one that must be clearly noted. You're right. The progression of Andy Stanley has not been a positive one throughout his ministry. He has been consistently left of center on really important doctrinal matters, which has rightly caught the attention of conservative Christian thinkers and leaders. Yep. In an interview with Ed Stetzer in 2009 regarding his book titled Communicating for a Change, Stetzer asked Stanley about preaching. The, quest the question was, what do you think about preaching verse by verse messages through books of the Bible? It was at that point that Andy Stanley responded, quote, 
guys that preach verse by verse through books of the Bible, that is just cheating. It's cheating because that would be easy, first of all. That isn't how you grow people. No one in the scripture modeled that. There's not one example of that, end quote. Now, yeah, so Andy Stanley doesn't like verse by verse preaching. He says it's easy preaching. Well, sir, I wish more people would do it because that's a great way to stay in context and, you know, actually explain the meaning of passages that we're using and not just quote passages and that people actually are disconnected from what the Bible verse means. Right. And so he calls it uh, easy. I remember when when I first heard this. Right. I, I do recall. I think I heard maybe even the term lazy being used in regards to verse by verse preaching. Um, but what actually Andy Stanley does is actually easy. You know, you come up there with your little whiteboard and your prop and you just talk to the people, right? Because you want to be relatable, right? You just want to be so relatable over an expense of the passage, right? Yeah. So you don't want to talk too much Bible. So you want to tell a lot of jokes, right? Be funny. <laughs> That's easy. Anybody can go up there and do that. Actually expositing the, the riches and treasures of God. That's actually the more difficult part. But again, Andy Stanley's... uh. Again, the, the secret sensitive model is known for <laughs> denigrating Bible as in opposed to uh, a lot of gimmicks and games. Quite clear that Stanley isn't a fan of verse by verse preaching. But what does that communicate regarding his overall approach to the Bible? Mm. In 2010, at the pastor's conference of the Southern Baptist Convention, Andy Stanley appealed to big corporations such as Chick-fil-A and Intel as examples to drive home what? his church growth message to thousands of pastors in attendance. Unfortunately, many churches run the church as some kind of corporation or business model. What what is the what is corporate world doing in the in the world that the church can incorporate? Not that you know the Bible's teaching this, and we do it. And oftentimes, what you see is actually it actually uh, causes them to denigrate some of the more biblical teachings. Right? We'll get to that in a second. He repeated the phrase, quote, if you make your church better, they will come and make your church bigger, end quote. And that's the problem. That's not the goal. We need to not try to make the church better. We need to try to make the church more biblical. His entire sermon was positioned squarely on pragmatism rather than the word of God. Mm -hmm. In his sermon, Andy Stanley said, quote, we've created church for church people, end quote. He then scolded church leaders for an unwillingness to make it easier for unchurched people to feel comfortable in our churches. Yeah, we don't let the we don't we don't drop the standard of the church so that unbelievers can feel more comfortable. And that's Andy Stanley's approach. That's the whole theology of the seeker sensitive movement. That's essentially what pragmatism is. Let me give you a quick definition of pragmatism, because it essentially pragmatism is a philosophical way to uh, especially in con the context of the church, it, it seeks to answer the question, what works, right? What gets people in? Not, not necessarily is it biblical, is the Bible teach it? No, right? That's why you have the fog machines on the stage and, you know, you got the pastor doing little 15, 20 minute talks because, right, nobody wants to talk for 45 because, right, the people want to listen. So we shorten our sermons, we engage the more music or the music is longer, right? And we do a lot more gimmicks and games and jokes, See, that's what pragmatism does. It, it creates a, a biblically illiterate church, though. In early 2015, Zondervan released a series of Bible study lessons by Andy Stanley titled Starting Point. You can see the first lesson on YouTube where he cast doubt upon the trustworthiness and reliability of the Bible in mm -hmm. his opening statements. In fact, Andy Stanley went as far as to say, quote, We went off to college and discovered that even though the Bible was sacred, it wasn't scientific. Mm. Even though it was something to appreciate, it wasn't necessarily something that was factual. Mm. Even though there were stories in here, talking about the Bible, that were inspirational, they weren't necessarily true, end <sighs> quote. And just like that, he casts doubt upon the reliability of sacred scripture and points people away from God's word. That's right. Yeah, it sounds like Satan, right? Did God say? Yeah, Andy Stanley holds to the possibility or not even possibility that there are errors taught in scripture. You know, there are contradictions. This is a denial of the inspiration and the inerrancy of scripture, which uh, Andy gives lip service to, but we can see by his actions that he doesn't, right? He's even called the Bible, you know, some kind of house of cars that can easily be toppled over, right? By secularists and all these kind of things. Sound familiar? 
That's precisely the method of Satan from the beginning. That's right. In 2016, on Easter Sunday, Andy Stanley opened his sermon with a statement that was aimed mostly at the unbeliever. He said, quote, If you said to me one-on-one, Andy, I'm not a Christian, I'm not a Jesus follower, but I'm going to let you take your best shot at convincing me to follow Jesus, here's what I wouldn't do. I wouldn't try to defend the history of the church because the church has done some really goofy things and there's some really embarrassing seasons of church history. And I wouldn't try to defend a lot of things that Christians have said or the ways that Christians have treated you. And I wouldn't try to convince you with the Bible, end quote. Mm. Stanley went on to explain, quote, there were thousands and thousands of Christians before there was a Bible, end quote. He then stated, quote, I will well, we'll let that quote finish, but that's not true. And you have a lot of people that uh, repeat that lie, especially uh, like out of Roman Catholicism, right? Um, but the Bible has always been circulating. The God's revelation has always been the key and, or Christians have always had God's revelation. You know, the early church had God's revelation. Now, some of them, especially, you know, you, you know, the uh, the New Testament days, they had a smaller canon, of course. Right. Because that's all they had was the Old Testament. But Christians have always had the scriptures. And then as the apostles wrote and they, the, the canon got expanded because of God's revelation, then uh, Christians, right, obviously had a more fuller canon. But Andy Stanley has repeated this lie no over and over and over. Well, the people, early church didn't have a Bible. That's not true. That's not true. Let's start with the resurrection of Jesus, end quote. Why is it that Andy Stanley seems to distance himself from the Bible? From 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, Paul's entire foundation of Christian hope in the resurrection is rooted and grounded in the scriptures. That's right. But Stanley points people away from the scriptures to the resurrection as if you can arrive at the empty tomb of Christ apart from the Bible. That's right. This pattern continued in 2018 as Andy Stanley argued in a sermon that the Christian faith must be, quote unquote, unhitched yep. from the Old Testament. You guys remember that? I remember where, where I was when I was kind of listening to all this. Uh, Andy Stanley talking about, um, you know, Christians need to unhitch from the Old Testament. Um, and this is what people this this is a very Martian kind of view. Not not kind of it. It, it is. It is a Martian view where you kind of have this reductionistic canon. And, and by the time you actually open your Bible, uh, you only have a few books of it left. Um you know, and I remember Jeff Durbin actually having a conversation with uh, Andy Stanley about these issues. It was it was interesting times, but let my brother here uh, finish th- finish it up talking about it. He said that Peter, James, and Paul elected. He said that Peter, James, and Paul elected to unhitch the Christian faith from their Jewish scriptures, and then he says, "And my friends, we must as well." End quote. Wow. This is one more example of Stanley's consistent pattern of casting doubt upon God's Word. This is a devilish agenda and one that must be properly noted. That's right. That brings us to the present controversy with the Unconditional Conference. Following the conference, Stanley preached a sermon to explain why his church hosted an event where two gay married men were speakers. The point of Stanley's sermon was built upon a false ethic of love. At one point in the opening words of his sermon, while responding to criticism, he said, quote, that version of Christianity draws lines. Jesus drew circles, end quote. It was clear from the beginning what Stanley was doing was pointing people away from the biblical ethic of love, which communicates truth. Andy Stanley points people away from the biblical teachings of Christianity to an ancient error of compromise and a sexual ethic that is driven by the winds of culture rather than the words of Scripture. That's right. The main outline of his sermon follows the following points. First, honor God with your body. Second, do not be mastered by anything. And third, do not sexualize any relationship outside of marriage. Now, as you can imagine, this is how he comes to embrace the two gay married men in the recent conference that was hosted by his church. It's just that simple. They're married. It's not adultery. It's not unlawful. Yeah, and I review that sermon 
uh, I think that sermon is actually deleted now, but my review of it is still up if you would like to listen to it. Because Andy has capitulated on the biblical view of marriage being one man and one woman. And the two, that is one man and one woman, becoming one flesh. Not one man, one man, not two girls. One man, one woman. That's what the Bible teaches. How does Stanley avoid the text of Scripture from Leviticus 18.22 that says, exactly. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. Right. It is an abomination. Well, it's simple. You unhitch yourself from the Old Testament. That's right. This was Andy Stanley's coming out moment. While this may seem new to people who are just now learning of Andy Stanley's compromise, this has been his method for many years now. That's right. In 2012, Stanley was the center of controversy once again with statements regarding the sin of homosexuality. In a sermon preached titled, quote, When Gracie Met Truthy, end quote, he described a couple in his church that had to be asked to step down from leadership. Two men were engaged in a homosexual relationship, but the reason they were asked to step down was what Stanley called just good old-fashioned adultery. Stanley explained, quote, You're in a sexual relationship with someone else's husband, end quote. Stanley capitulated on the whole issue, calling out the sin of adultery while refusing to call out the sin of homosexuality. Yeah, I actually did a review of that as well. Yeah, you had a a man who left his wife to be with another man and um you know they're obviously having a, a fornication relationship and the reason why they got sat down is not because of the the homosexual relationship but because they were committing adultery and these people were still allowed to attend the church even after they were told to step down they they weren't removed for being unrepented uh just terrible is this new sexual ethic permissible within christian circles should we accept a category for gay Christianity? No. The answer is clear when we read the scriptures. Jesus' definition of marriage is a covenant relationship between a man and a woman. That's right. The term for sexual immorality is taken from the Greek word pornea, from where we derive our English word pornography. This word encompasses sexual activity outside of marriage and is condemned by Christ and the apostles in the New Testament. That's right. In his letter to the church at Corinth, Paul explains in 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 through 11, quote, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God, end quote. Amen. The point is abundantly clear. As Paul addresses these believers, he said, quote, And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God, end quote. That pattern of living was past tense. Some people in the Corinthian church had been characterized by a homosexual lifestyle in the past, right. but now they are walking in a path of godliness. Mm. Mark, in, in that good news that God saves sinners, and when God saves sinners, it's not that we become sinless, but we become repentant that we no longer identify with this lifestyle. We no longer want to pursue this immorality, this this pagan lifestyle, this sin that we once were indulged and engulfed in. But Andy Stanley allows for this. See, this is the problem with a lot of modern evangelicals, right? You know, they come up with all sort of cliches to why you should. I just love. Love is love. Yeah, but love has a biblical context. And first and foremost, it's, you know, loving God. Right. And then love for our neighbor, which is rooted in God's law, which is holy. By sanctification of the spirit, Paul drives home the point further by writing flee from sexual immorality from 1 Corinthians 6, 18. When versions of gay Christianity creep into the life of your local church, it must be clearly and directly addressed from Scripture. Amen. When we see this issue creep up in our church associations or denominations, as is the case with the PCA in their debate over Side B Christianity, 
which was popularized by the Revoice Conference in 2018. And let me just explain side B Christianity. What side B Christianity says, well, the act is wrong, but the desire is completely acceptable and normal. And it's okay to be a great Christian by desire. Well, I think Romans 1 cancels that out. And there is no sin you can desire on, which let's say you're just a thieving, greedy in your heart. You just don't act on it. The desire and act for it is is uh, wrong as well. See, God doesn't just deal with the acts of man. He deals with the heart of man as well. It must be swiftly opposed. There is no such thing as gay Christianity. Amen. Amen. There is only one version of Christianity, and it's clearly defined in the pages of Scripture. That's right. Andy Stanley has officially come out of the closet. Hmm. Not only should we flee sexual immorality, but we should flee from wolves who seek to destroy God's sheep. Mm. It is a biblical and loving thing to mark those who cause division and offenses contrary to the Word of God. That's right. It is a proper thing to name names and to warn people of wolves and false teachers who seek to destroy. Do not be led astray by Andy Stanley. Mm. He is a wolf who must be exposed, not a pastor to follow. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus who said, quote, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, mm-hmm. but inwardly are, are ravenous, ravenous wolves. wolves. Yep. End quote. Wow. What a, what a good message and timely. Uh, again, maybe you don't know who Andy Stanley is, but this is applicable to others who allow sin into the church. Saying, no, it's okay. It's okay. Well, just the desire, just a little compromise. Again, a little leaven leavens the whole lump, right? You allow one compromise, and guess what? It grows and it grows and it grows and it festers. Again, Andy has been on this trajectory, as uh, Brother Josh noted, for a number of years. And now by the point, it's getting a, a lot larger. And unfortunately, many people excuse it. They all oh, ignore it, right? But we cannot be, we as God's people have to protect and warn as much as we can about the dangers that exist in the body. Till the next time, grace and peace. Yo, grace and peace. Thank you for watching another episode of All Things Theology. If you enjoyed what you heard today, go on and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly lives, videos, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, things about the culture, and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us. Also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you would like that, hit the description link in below.